untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white combo deck titled Reverend Raven, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the deck features The Raven's Warning from Kaldheim, a 3-mana saga that on the first chapter creates a 1-1 blue bird creature token with flying. We also gain 2 life. On the second chapter, whenever one or more creatures we control with flying deal combat damage to a player this turn, we can take a look at the player's hand and we get to draw a card. And on the third and final chapter, we may put a card we own from outside the game on top of our library, meaning we can grab a card out of our sideboard and put it on top of our deck. Now there will be a slight rules change in how best of one sideboarding works, since we'll only get access to 7 cards with Strixhaven as opposed to the regular 15, so I've already adjusted the sideboard for this upcoming change, so we only have 7 sideboard cards. And then what's something powerful we can do in blue-white with the Raven's Warning? Is there maybe some sort of combo we can enable? Well, we've got the Reverend Hoplite plus Mystic Reflection combo, which you may remember from a previous video. So Reverend Hoplite, a 5-mana 1-2 human soldier, that when it enters a battlefield creates a number of 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens equal to our devotion to white. So we add up all the white mana symbols on the permanence we control, and that determines our devotion to white. And then we've got Mystic Reflection, a 2-mana instant that has foretell, so we can pay 2 generic mana and then later cast it for just a single blue. It's an instant saying choose target a non-legendary creature and the next time one or more creatures or planeswalkers enter the battlefield this turn, they enter as copies of the chosen creature. Which means that if we cast our Reverend Hoplite, in response to the trigger that makes a whole bunch of tokens, we can cast our Mystic Reflection targeting Reverend Hoplite, and now instead of getting a whole bunch of 1-1 one -one tokens, we get a whole bunch of Reverend Hoplites that each make their 1-1 one -one tokens, and our devotion to white has also increased in the meantime. So that's how this deck can combo off and generate an entire army out of nowhere. So that's our basic game plan. We've got the Raven's Warning to grab either Mystic Reflection or Reverend Hoplite to put it on top of our deck, and then hopefully we'll have the other combo piece already in hand, ready to go. And then we've got some other signboard cards we can potentially grab, including Shatter the Sky as kind of a panic button in case the opponent's overwhelming us and we need to reset the board. We've got a bit of removal with Elspeth Conquers Death. We've got a Flicker of Fate, which can also flicker either our Reverend Hoplite or one of our creatures with an ETB effect can also flicker the Raven's Warning if we've got another one going and then reset it to restart all the different chapters. Then we've got a Yurion Sky Nomad, which can also be quite nice in this deck since we have a lot of permanents that we wouldn't mind re-triggering. Also works very nicely with the Constellation on Archon of Sun's Grace, which is another mainstay in this deck, providing double white devotion for Reverend Hoplite and synergizing with a lot of the enchantments in the deck. Then we've got an individually powerful card here with Kira Best of Sea God that can potentially take over the game by itself. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 2 mana, we're featuring the full playset of Youthful Valkyrie as a 2 mana 1 3 flyer. And whenever another angel enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Youthful Valkyrie. So this is nice as it gives us a 2 mana flyer, so that if the opponent does have an answer to the 1 1 bird token, we can still potentially enable the second chapter and draw the card and take a look at the opponent's hand. Then it's also an angel to synergize with our Righteous Valkyrie, which is another interesting part of this deck. A 3 mana 2 or Angel Cleric with Flying, saying whenever another Angel or Cleric enters a battlefield under our control, we gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So this can potentially gain a lot of life, and as long as we have 27 or more life, creatures we control get plus 2 plus 2, so that's also a nice bonus. And what's great about Righteous Valkyrie is that we can also potentially target it with our Mystic Reflection if we're casting our Reverend Hoplite instead of targeting the Hoplite itself. So now instead of getting a whole army of 1-1 tokens, we get an entire army of Righteous Valkyries that will all see each other enter the battlefield, gain us a ton of life, and then for each Valkyrie in play our creatures get plus 2 plus 2, so we can often kill the opponent out of nowhere. So that's another reason why Valkyrie is in this deck. Then at 2 mana we also have 2 copies of Daxos, Blessed by the Sun, which provides a nice bit of devotion, and also has toughness equal to our devotion to white, and gains 1 life whenever one of our creatures enters the battlefield or dies, so it can also keep our life total nice and high for Righteous Valkyrie. And then we also have the full playset of Ruined Halo, not a card you see very often, but the main reason we're playing this is that it's providing 2 devotion for Reverend Hoplite, it helps us stay alive by giving us protection from the chosen card name, so we don't take any damage from any specific creatures, and it's also an enchantment to enable Constellation for Archon of Sun's Grace, so it does a lot of different things in the deck. We can even reset Ruined Halo once we flicker it with Yorion, and potentially name a different card if the board state has changed and we need to name something else, so there's a bit of synergy there too. Then 
then we've got our three copies of Mystic Reflection. Every now and then you can also use it as a pseudo counter spell to counter the opponent's creature or planeswalker. And then four copies of Omen of the Sea. Doesn't provide white devotion, but it's still a nice enchantment, giving us a bit of card selection to help us assemble the various combos and another enchantment for Archon of Sun's Grace. Then besides four copies of the Raven's Warning, we also have two copies of Lin Vala, Shield of Seagate, as a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three legendary angel wizard with flying, so it also triggers our Righteous Valkyrie. We won't be enabling a full party with Lin Vala, so we can ignore the middle part of the card, but we can sacrifice Lin Vala at any point and choose Hexproof or Indestructible, and creatures we control gain that ability until end of turn, so that can potentially protect our board state from any interaction from the opponent, or maybe give our creatures Indestructible once we've already made a whole bunch of 1-1 tokens. And then we also have two copies of Banishing Light as a bit of interaction, another enchantment for Archon of Sun's Grace, which provides double devotion for Hoplite, a 3-4 flying a lifelinking Archon, saying Pegasus creatures we control have lifelink, and Constellation says whenever an enchantment enters a battlefield under our control, we get to make a 2-2 white Pegasus creature token with flying, which of course will gain a lifelink as long as the Archon's in play. And then three copies of Hoplite, with an additional copy in the sideboard to search up with the Raven's Warning. Then we need a lot of white mana to enable a lot of these early double white spells. So we've got eight basic planes, two copies of Castle Ardenvale as another mana sink, and then a lot of dual lands with two copies of Varagrin Triumph, still counts as a planes for Castle Ardenvale, then four Temple of Enlightenment, which can also help us assemble the various combos, and four of the blue white pathway with four basic islands. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Jigantha, the Wellspring deck. Our draw could use an extra white source and doesn't really have any of the combo pieces. But we can probably play a decent fair game with Omen and Banishing Lights with our Archon. Valkyrie, I think I got a bottom since we're looking for a planes. Put on red black, maybe a sacrifice deck. And we'll play Daxus for now. Throne of Death. Could main phase Omen, could represent a counter spell here. Don't think I want a banishing line to throne. Claim the Firstborn, so they're gonna have a Village Rights as well here. They could have dealt two damage first, not sure why they didn't. So at least Archon can be Stolen by Claim the Firstborn, but they could have a Crone War to steal it instead. And then I'm hoping to find something like the Raven's Warning, which, if we don't have one of the combo pieces to go with it, we could just get something like Yorion, or maybe Elspeth Conquers Death, or if we get to enough mana, Cure of the Sea God. If they have the Vampire Dragon, we can exile it, so it's gonna be a Timurid Calls of Death instead. And it mills over an Akron War, which the opponent promptly exiled. Alright, Linvala's nice. Could Banishing Light Timurid Calls of Dead. I think we just double Angel here. Opponent might be sitting on another Village Rites. But at least Linvala protects my creatures from one of the opponent's uh, steel effects. And then I can keep Banishing Light for something a little bit more impactful. Can also consider sacking Omen in our upkeep. Predator gets milled. Might see Croxa 
escaped in a couple turns. A lot of lands. Alright, claim the firstborn. We suspect our opponent has a village rights in hand, so I think I should sacrifice here. And then we'll give our creatures hexproof instead of indestructible. Since indestructible doesn't help if they steal and sacrifice. Egon, God of Death, 6-6 six, six Death Touch, with plenty of food in the graveyard. So I think we do sack Omen. Although if they have a Croxa that they're going to play to make me discard whatever scry to the top, assuming I play land and Banishing Light here, that's a little awkward. So I guess we'll just wait and draw. And then we can Banishing Light Egon. Hit for five. And Omen can make another Pegasus. There we see Croxa hit the graveyard. And a Crone War to steal my Archon, presumably. Make a 2 2 first. Bottom, bottom. And we'll take four. Alright, so do I want to scry on upkeep here? So we've got the Mystic Reflection. We can save it from Croxa making us discard it. So we're really just looking for Hoplite at this point. But we can scry end of turn. So we'll just take our draw. And then play Temple. Rune Halo doesn't help too much. Foretell. And then we've got a couple more looks at a Hoplite, which presumably wins us the game here. Although I guess our devotion to white isn't incredibly high right now. Another Timurd calls it dead. Makes a Pegasus. So at this point, Raven's Warning is not great since the opponent has a couple flying blockers. And there's Hoplite, so keep that on top. Raven's Warning as a follow-up in case the Hoplite plan doesn't work out. Is that good enough? Opponent could have a Stomp to kill my Hoplite in response to me... Uh, Targeting it with Reflection. So I guess a follow-up Raven's Warning is not the worst. Alright, I think it's go time. Play Hoplites. Mystic Reflection Hoplites. Hopefully no Stomp. And that makes a nice wide army. And the next turn we should be able to attack for lethal. Forced to attack into Archon, sadly. Take out a 2-2. Phil tried to sacrifice his Archon at long last. But I don't know that the Sacrifice deck has a way to deal with this many tokens. Our tamped creatures die to the Akron War. Alright, GG's. And our opponent concedes, so managed to beat a red-black sacrifice, a legitimate standard deck 
on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and this hand's not particularly exciting, but we do have double Valkyrie early on, and one of our combo pieces with Reflection, although we still need some blue mana eventually. So if we draw Hoplites, we're in business. We will need blue mana for Raven's Warning, but there we go. For now, play Valkyrie. Opponent appears to be on Mono Red. As we see a second charger. So Valkyrie can block the first. Alright, triple charger. Get to play Valkyrie plus Temple. And then Temple's just looking for Hoplites. Omen's probably good enough. Can trigger Archon as well, so... Turn 4 we can play Archon. Turn 5 we can... Omen plus maybe Foretell or Reflection. Alright, Pwn's playing green as well. And it's gonna be a Relic Robber. So perhaps there's some sort of party synergy deck. They don't appear to have any good attacks. And we're happy just playing defense here. Aha, uh -huh, so they might be Goblin Tribal as we find a Righteous Valkyrie. So I probably Omen first and then see what we pick up, but most likely play Valkyrie here. Alright, there's a Hoplite and another Valkyrie. So I could already Hoplite next turn to combo off, but I kind of want to copy my Valkyrie. So we'll play Valkyrie first and take it slow. And then I can draw another Valkyrie, which I can play alongside Foretelling Reflection. And we'll keep the Archon back, even though we could probably afford to attack. So this is probably Overkill. But next turn we can Valkyrie plus Fertel, and then I guess we still need land number 6 to play alongside Hoplite. But we're not under any pressure. Alright, fine, I guess we'll get ourselves a plus 2 plus 2 bonus. And that's times two because we have double Valkyrie. So we're kind of playing with our food here. We see why our opponent's playing green. It's for Realmwalker. Naming Goblin. All the Snoops basically already having the same effect. And sadly our opponent concedes before we could pull off the Hoplite combo here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a Reflection and Omen to dig for Hoplite, so we'll try this. Not sure what to name with Halo just yet. But we've got other two mana plays we can make in the meantime. So let's see what the opponent is up to. Turn one Forests into Angel Innkeeper, so an adventure deck. Not gonna rune tail on Innkeeper, although we might name a Lovestruck Beast later. So for now, I think we just foretell Mystic Reflection. Since I already have a turn 3 play lined up, so there's a bit less value in casting Omen. Maybe we pick up an Archon, which can then uh, enable Constellation with Omen. Put on blue green. Foretells. So maybe that's an Alrun's Epiphany, and there's Hoplite, alright, so now we just need to hit our land drops. Play a Limvala for now. And Limvala gives us a bit of protection against potential interaction. So now our objective is just to increase our white devotion as much as possible. It's gonna be a Lovestruck Beast Adventured. Into a Stormwing Entity, so this looks like our Toski deck that we featured not too long ago. So Halo can name Stormwing Entity. And then we'll save the Omen for instant speed.
can't attack into the Stormwing since we only have protection from the entity when it attacks or life total. But it could still trade for Limvala. Opponent runs out the beast, draws a card. So they still don't have any great attacks. And a Sentinel. So next turn they could go up to 6 mana, which is already enough to cast Epiphany that they foretold. And a Righteous Valkyrie plus a land. So, yeah, I mean, I could keep both. And then next turn we get to play Valkyrie. And then turn 6 I can Hoplite plus Reflection. But our opponent will potentially get to attack us twice with the Lovestruck Beast. Could technically also double block the beast and only lose one creature. So beast attacks. They might have a Brazen Boar Wars, so double blocking still a little bit risky. So I'll take 5, they're probably going to Epiphany, hit me for 5 again, but that's okay. Or they might decide to deploy more creatures out before casting the Epiphany. Limvala protects us from a Brazen Borrower, bouncing one of our creatures in response to Reflection. Uh, opponent goes for Innkeeper into another adventure, presumably. Nope, opponent just passes. So one card in hand. Well, I could play Ruined Halo to increase my devotion a little bit more. And that can name Lovestruck Beast, so I think that's fine. I'm not really under any pressure. And every additional devotion makes a pretty big difference here. And then we can also sacrifice Omen end of turn. And then the question is, do we want to copy Hoplites to make a million tokens, or do we copy Valkyrie to have a million Valkyries? I think Valkyrie is going to be better here, although they're both quite good. Could maybe see Brazen Borrower Adventured and Cast end of turn, which could maybe bounce a Rune Halo. So that's going to decrease our devotion again, sadly. Bounces the one on Lovestroke Beast. That works. Now they still don't have any amazing attacks other than the beast itself. Although if they draw into a Toski, they could potentially run away with the game. So I'm probably not going to be able to wait on replaying the Halo. Probably going to just have to go for Hoplites. All right, there's Toski. So expect to see a pretty big attack. Another beast adventured. Now we still have Halo naming Stormwing Entity here. All right, just an attack for five. We'll take it. And then we'll sacrifice Omen. But now we'll probably have to go for it, since I don't think we can afford to wait another turn. Another Limvala, and land can go to the bottom. Alright, so go full control, cast our Hoplites. And in response to the trigger, target Valkyrie. And that's a lot of triggers. And we can probably afford to attack. So we're at 349 life. Should keep us alive for some time here. Put on chumps with Entity, which isn't going to deal any damage anyway. 
So next turn they can Elrond's Epiphany, take an extra turn, but we've got six great blockers. So I don't think they'll be able to make too much progress. It's gonna be a beast instead. And next turn, I'm pretty sure we can attack for lethal. Are we gonna see a last ditch attack here? We do not, as our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. Maybe a cycling deck. For now... I'm not sure yet what to do with the Scry, so we'll just play a Triumph instead. I guess we could use another untapped land. So now we get to curve Valkyrie into a Righteous Valkyrie. Opponent is holding a one mana instant. So next turn we have to decide if we want to play Temple plus Omen or maybe double Omen. Probably start by playing one of them, see what we draw into. Cathartic Reunion, discarding. Inventory in Kazul's Fury, so there's some sort of spells deck. And there's Mystic Reflection. So could also keep up Omen and Instant Speed. Foretell the Reflection here. Yeah, I don't mind that. Keep the opponent on their toes, as they don't know what we're holding. And then we'll fire off an Omen, looking for Hoplite at this point. Limvala is probably pretty useful if our opponent's holding interaction, so don't mind Limvala. Another Angel to trigger Righteous Valkyrie as well. So with this turn, if I go Linvala Omen, I won't get to the 6 mana required to Hoplite plus Reflection if we draw into it. So I could just go Linvala Temple. Let's start with Linvala and see if they have a response. And we'll send for five, and I think we're just gonna keep up Omen of the Sea. Opponent's down to nine in the meantime. It's gonna be a thrill of possibility, discarding another thrill end of turn. So we might see something like Blitz of the Thunder Raptor take out some of our creatures. Another temple. So our opponent doesn't appear to have the mana to cast Lurus, at least not yet. Uh -huh, it's gonna be a Seagate Stormcaller into maybe some interaction. And yep, there's a double blitz, but we can Sacrifice Limvala here to save both creatures. And doesn't matter too much here. Hexproof or indestructible. 
Uh, let's see if we can find untapped land plus hoplites. Another righteous Valkyrie, I guess, does it too. Since that lets us get up to 27, pumps our two creatures. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Can foretell reflection, so Raven's Warning can grab hoplites. And we've got a bit of interaction in the meantime. So, hopefully we have an idea of what to name with Rune Halo on turn one, so we can run it out there. Basic planes. That's not much to go on, so we'll just foretell the reflection instead. Red Whites and Alpine Houndmaster. All right, now we've got a better idea what to name. So if this is some sort of Dog Tribal slash Winota deck, they usually don't have much removal, as we see Haktos hit the graveyard. Now we can prevent the opponent from casting Winota and triggering it a bunch. I think we just Raven's Warning here and try and set up our Hoplite combo as soon as possible. And I don't really expect a 1 1 token to die here. Bolt Hounds. Alright. Hits us for 6. Get to attack. And yeah, there's Winota. So that's coming down next turn. Halo names Houndmaster. And then I can Omen as well. Now I could also Mystic Reflection Winota to counter her, turn her into a Raven. My opponent's gonna set up a turn first with Watchdog and Igniusker. And we're just going to take two here. Alright, so what do we want? Next turn we get to put Hoplite on top of our deck. So we just want to survive a turn of Winota shenanigans. Pun gets three triggers, so it could hurt pretty badly. I guess Valkyrie is a better blocker. And then we'll put Hoplite on top. Scry will keep it there. Alright, let's see if we're dead. Alright, opponent not going for Winota just yet. Another Houndmaster, so I think that buys us enough time to combo off. Opponent passes. And then go full control, play Hoplite. And here I kind of like targeting the Valkyrie. And we can start attacking. Alright, sweet. So, pretty clean combo here, thanks to the Raven's Warning. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Missing a second white source, but we've got Temple and Omen to help us find it. Lots of interaction to stay alive. No combo pieces just yet, but we can find those in due time. Another temple's interesting. I think I still bottom it. Since it's kind of going to be awkward to curve out with it. Planes is better. 
Don't know yet what to name with Rune Taylor, so we'll Omen instead. Put it on red white. And they turn to robber. Alright. So in response to the trigger, I can omen. And then What do we give them here? Maybe let them exile the rune halo, which I don't care too much about. But then I have to draw a youthful Valkyrie. So maybe bottom both. And our opponent got a Raven's Warning. That one would have been nice to have. So probably just Banishing Light to Robber, or we can play Linvala as a blocker. It's probably slightly better here. Rune Tail not a great solution since they still get to keep attacking and potentially get card advantage. So we've got our Hoplite, just missing Mystic Reflection. I see Colossal Plow. Our opponent's a person of culture. Well, could Rune Halo plow, or we can Banishing Light it, which seems a little safer. In case they have a Giant Ox next turn. And then next turn we can increase our Devotion a bunch with Valkyrie and Halo. And then, yeah, we're just waiting for that Mystic Reflection. Robber attacks. I guess they just want to cast a Raven's Warning. They might have a cheap burn spell to finish off Linvala. Alright, there's Archon. Probably worth playing first. I'll keep Linvala back. So that if they have a single removal spell, I can still block the token to avoid letting them draw a card. And Lurus replays Robber. And that's fine. And then a good turn for Valkyrie plus Rune Halo, although I'm not quite sure what to name. Maybe name Colossal Plow. Not sure what the opponent's playing here. I guess we'll just name Lurus here. And then I do need land 6 eventually to pull off the Hoplite combo. And then next turn I can just start scrying with the Omen to try and find Mystic Reflection. Raven's Warning would also be good. Second Robber. And a Giant Ox. And I think we upkeep Scry. That way I can potentially draw the Reflection and foretell it, and there it is. And then we'll have exactly enough mana next turn to pull off the combo. And we even have Limvala for protection in case they have some removal at already. Just gonna copy Valkyrie. Now Robert does have Reach. Important to keep in mind. We get to untap, and it's go time. Go full control, just in case. Target Valkyrie. And that's a lot of triggers. And our opponent explodes. We weren't even done gaining life here. Alright, so we got to see our Reverend Raven deck in action today. Of course, we didn't face any super competitive decks, so I wouldn't necessarily take this as a measurement of how good the deck actually is, but it is definitely a lot of fun once we get to pull off the combo, and against creature decks that don't pack too much interaction, we can usually go over the top after taking an initial beating. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.